Hello learners, welcome to Python Revision Tour Session 1. In this class, we will revise few basic things like tokens, immutability of identifiers and other basic issues related with Python programming. At the end of this class, you will be getting few exercises to solve. So let us begin our session. Python tokens. Tokens are the smallest entities such as symbols, words, name using which programs are created. Python programs need five basic types of token like keywords, identifiers, literals, operators and punctuators. Keywords are the reserved words which convey specific meaning to a Python compiler whenever it is met in a program. They can't be changed as they are hardwired deep into the language construct of Python. Identifiers, on the other hand, are certain words which are not reserved and are being named by programmers during course of writing program to keep associating temporary values with them. The naming rules for identifiers are specific, like they cannot be a keyword, they must not start with a digit, but digit can be part of it at any other place. They must not have special symbols like question mark, exclamation or hash, except underscore, which is the only acceptable special character in identifier or variable name. So one has to take care of these rules while naming variables in their program. You can see the example of some identifier on your screen such as value or is underscore valid etc. Let us come to the literals. Literals are the values which we use and associate with identifiers during course of program. The literals are of various types such as integers like 1, minus 1, 24, etc. Strings like my name enclosed within single or double quotes are another type of literals. Floating points or decimal values like 23.78 are also just a different type of literal. Python also supports imaginary numbers in form of a plus bj as one of its literals. Apart from this, we also have literals which depicts boolean values like true and false, though these two are also keywords in Python. Operators are symbols which we use to create mathematical and logical expressions. There are many types of operators in Python like plus, minus, division, integer division, modular division, etc. which we will use and see in our future classes. Now let us come to the end of the list that is punctuators. Punctuators are special characters which are used to create separations between two different types of tokens in a program like single inverted quotes or double inverted quotes marks a string. A third bracket encloses a list data value etc. Now let us come to dynamic typing. There are two important concepts associated with identifiers or variables in Python namely dynamic typing and immutability. Let us understand both of them. Now, when we talk about Python identifiers or variables, there always comes a concept called dynamic typing in Python. With dynamic typing, a Python single variable can associate itself with many different data values within same program execution. It means that a Python variable does not stick itself only to a particular data type as it is a case with many popular programming languages like C, C++, Java, etc. So there is no need to specify the data type of a variable explicitly in Python program. The data type of the variable is decided 
only when it associates itself with a particular type of data value. This association of variable name with data objects takes place when we use equal to operator to assign a value to a variable name. As you can see on your screen that the variable sum underscore value is associated with a data object 9. Let us see an code example an example to understand how Python an example support. to understand how Python supports dynamic typing uh, with its variable. So here we can see that if I am going to declare a variable like uh, say for example clap and uh, make it initialize with 23 and if I am uh, printing the value of the clap it gives you 23 but in the next suppose in the next line if I am writing clap is equal to not clapped and this is a string I have, I have been assigning into the clap variable and now if I am printing clap it gives not clapped if I am finding out the type of clap then it shows me class is string whereas if in the next very line if I am associating clap with a value called 89.78 and again I am finding out its type using type clap it shows me float thus we can observe that the variable clap does not have a fixed type of data type associated with it. It depends upon the changing nature of the value which is associated with that particular identifier or variable. First it was having a numeric type 23 integer type value associated with it. Next we have associated it with a string type value and again lastly we have associated it with a float type value and hence the type of this particular variable clap keeps changing on depending upon the type of value which is associated with it. So this demonstrates the dynamic typing nature of the variables or identifiers in, in Python. So after understanding the concept of dynamic typing, let us understand the concept of immutability of data in Python. Immutability empowers Python environment to associate same data objects with multiple names or rather variable names thus reducing unnecessary duplication of data object in memory it reduces memory consumption the immutable data value once created in memory never gets deleted from memory till the program execution finishes even if we are not associating it with any variable name further if you are associating an older variable name with a new data value, it does not changes the older data value. Rather, the older data value remains intact in memory at the same place and the current new data value of the variable name is created at new memory space. The Python compiler keeps this odd data value intact thinking that it might be again associated with another variable name at some point in future during the course of execution. Now you might think it as a problem like if a large number of such immutable data objects are being used in a program then gradually we might end up with a large chunk of garbage data. So we need not worry about this because Python has its own way of garbage collection for those data objects which are not used for long enough time during the program execution. Let us understand the concept of mutability and immutability in Python. Let us see one code example. We are going to declare a variable a with a value 23 assigned to it. Now if I am going to print a this shows you the value 23. If I am going to print the id of a the, the function id of a gives the memory address of that variable a where the 23 is allocated or where the 23 value is associated 
Now, if I am going to assign a newer value to variable a, say suppose I am going to assign 45. Now, if I am going to find out the id of a, it gives you a newer id which is the id of the value associated with it which is 45. So, the id of a keeps changing from one value to another value. So, actually the name a doesn't have any significance. The significance of name a does not stand for a python program. The only thing which is most significant here is the data value which is associated with a name. Now if what happens to the value 23 which is which was allotted which was uh, associated with variable a beforehand. So let us find out what happens to 23 whether it, it gets deleted from memory or whether it is still in the memory. So for to find out this what we will do we will we'll have a statement like id of 23. If I am going to print the id of 23 we see that this id matches with the id of a that means what 23 is still remaining in memory though the id of a has changed to this id which is 68 in the uh, we, we can see here the last uh, figures are 68 so the new id of a is 433556267 whereas this id is not the newer id of a because a has changed to the value 2045 it is it has taken the id of 45 but the value 23 remains in the memory as it is because it, it never gets destroyed from the memory and that is shown by the id of a here and the same id is being shown for the value 23 so hence it proves that there is no deletion of value from the memory this type of value this particular type of value such as 23 or something value like uh, decimal point uh, or floating point values they never gets out of the memory w once it is created in the memory they remains there for long until unless the program is being closed out so here is the list of all those data objects which are immutable when created in memory like integers floating point numbers boolean values imaginary numbers string values though python offers immutable data objects but at the same time we also have mutable data objects in python where we can change or alter the data value in memory and also can remove it completely from the memory this is in contrast with the immutable data values we have seen earlier as they cannot be changed or removed by the programmer earlier in class 11 you have used lists as a mutable data objects let us see a code example to understand this classes you might have learned about lists a general list is something like this having a collection of values separated with comma within square within the square brackets and if we are going to print this list l it shows us the values of the list now this list is in python is treated as a mutable data value now why is it so because there are certain functions or certain manipulations that we can do over this list to modify the values which are present within the list. Say for example, if I am going to write L at 0 is equal to 90 and now I am going to print this list again, say L and we can see that now the value 23 it was there previously in the list gets modified by a newer value 90 now let us also verify what happens to the id of l
we can see that the id of l is something like this now again if i am going to modify the list value say for example if i am going to modify the first value of the list again with a value with a value say for example 23 again and print it again and let us now find out the id of l now we can see that the id of l remains the same though we are going to we are we are changing the values within the list so this shows the mutability nature of the list that is the values inside the list can be manipulated can be altered can be changed to any other value at any other point of time and this value does not remains in memory now what happens if i am going to print the id of 23 suppose if i am going to print the id of 23 what happens then now this value 23 is there in memory the value which we are which we have used inside a list 23 that is there in memory but that is assembled within the area of list so the id of list is something somewhat different and the id of 23 which is a which is a data value which is an integer data value is something different but when it comes within a list we can modify its value so what happens here is that if a data value such as an integer data value becomes part of an object like list it can be modified it can be altered it can be changed and that is what is the concept of mutability in python there are also some other data objects like dictionaries which like lists can be manipulated can be modified can be altered at different point of time in a program so here comes the list of so we have two sets of data values in python that is mutable and immutable now a big question arises that when we would prefer the one over the other during course of programming immutable data values saves much of the python's program memory by not creating redundant data values so if variable t and q are both associated with a value 23 there is no need of creating two separate copies of the value 23 and the mutability increases the functionality and are favored over immutable data objects when there is a need to store multiple values of same type as it saves memory in this situation so let us justify these two points with the help of an example let us justify the above two points that we have understood the first point was that the immutable data types often helps us to save memory when we are in need of declaring few variables let us justify it with the help of an example let us find out let us declare a variable called r and associate it with a value 78 now if i am printing the value of r it shows us 78 now if i am going to again declare a variable g and again i am associating with it with same value 78 and if I am printing the value of g, it shows 78. Now let us find out what are the IDs of these two variables r and g. So let us find out using id function. id of r, comma id of g. We can see that it gives us two same memory locations. That means both r and g are variable names which are associated with same value 78 whose id is 4443538480 this means that there is no need of redundancy of values the 78 the value 78 does not needs to be copied 
in both R and G separately. Instead, what the Python does is that it creates only one copy of 78 and associates the same value, the same ID with two names R and G. So, this clarifies our first point that sometimes it helps to save memory when we are dealing with immutable data types like R and G. Here in this case, the R and G are integer types which are immutable. Now let us find out, let us clarify the second point which tells us that sometimes it is good to use mutable data types instead of immutable data types when we are going to use more than more number of variables, more number of values within a single program. Say for example, let us find out what is, let us here, here to justify this point, I will use one specific function called get size of. And this get size of function is a part of a module called sys. So I have to import a module called sys. The import command you might have learned in your earlier class 11. It imports a particular module in your program. So sys is one of such module under which there is a function called get size of. So I will import this sys in my program. And now what, what I will do, I am going to type sys of get size of r. Let us find out what is the size of r. It gives you the size in bytes that is 28 bytes. The size of r which is an integer is having 28 byte size. Now let us find out what happens when I am declaring a mutable data type such as list having one single value. So let us find out, let us declare one list L and let us keep one single value inside it, 45. And now I am going to print the size of this L. Get size of L. Let us find out, it shows us 64 bytes. Now, as of now, you, you may agree that Okay, this, immuta this mutable data type such as list is taking more memory than immutable data type R. But what if I am going to use larger number of, I am going to keep larger number of such values inside the list. Let us, let us find out what happens if I am adding one or more values into the list and getting again the size of that particular list. Let us add one more value or two more values inside list and find out what is the size, what happens to the size of that particular list. So to add two, two values into the list, we'll use append function that's, that you have you might have learned in class 11, append l dot append 45. I'm going to append this, this, this function append appends the value 45, say newer value, say for example 56. It appends a new value for 56 uh, to the last of the last m means to the, uh, the uh, rear end of the list. So let us find out what is the value of L now. It gives you 45 and 56. Now let us find out what is the size of this list. What happens to the size of this list? How the size of this list, li list gets modified? So get size of L. Here what it gives? It gives us 96. So adding one more value increases the size of list to 96 till now you will agree that okay if we we are going to take two immutable variables such as two two immutable variable we are going to use for keeping the values 45 and 56 that would have taken 28 plus 28 and that is uh, again 56 bytes in memory but here we are again observing that this list is taking more memory than that that is 96 but let us let us append one more value into this list and see the size what happens to the size so let us append one more value 78 and now let us find out what is the size of this list get size of l and now you can see the size is same, 96 is there. So now, from now onwards, if I'm going to append this value into the list, say for example, 67 again, and now let us find out the size again. 
get size of L, it again gives us 96. So, now we can see that the list contains more than two values, that is four values and the size is still in bytes, it is occupying 96 bytes. But if this would have been kept in a mutable data types like integer, we will require four such integer to keep these, these four values separately. And that would require 28 plus 28 plus 28 plus 28 and of course that will be exceeding this value 96. So here in this case what we observe that if we are going to keep if we want in our program to keep more than uh, means a uh, uh, fewer number of values then we uh, we can we can go for um, mutable data types like integers but if i want to keep a larger number of gathering of values then we must use uh, immutable data types because in that situation uh, the, mu the mutable data sorry the mutable data types in this situation the mutable data types gives you more opportunity to save memory. So here comes these three exercises for you to solve in respect of this class. The first question asks you to create some invalid variable names in Python. You must name at least four of them all different. The next question asks you to find out the size of different data types of variables which you find across your Python program like floats, strings, booleans, integers, tuples, lists, dictionaries, etc. You can use any Python ID for that. The last question is a code snippet which is generally not preferred by programmers. You have to find out why. You try to post the answers to the exercises in our Kaizala group and I will respond to it as, an, as soon as possible. See you in the next class. Thank you.